Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 21st, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Well, let's start with a diary from one of our sans.edu undergraduate interns. On Slabovsky wrote a diary outlining all the different options that you have to secure an Ubuntu system beyond usernames and passwords. Usernames and passwords, we all know, don't work, in particular if you have to deal with many users. So Owen's diary walks you through how to configure some of these options, TCP wrappers, of course, it's probably the least uh, secure one of the options, but also how to implement, for example, Google authenticators and other multi-factor authentication systems to log in to the command line. SSH should, of course, use keys and those keys need to be properly secure. But this blog really looks at other reasons why you may want to authenticate, for example, on a physical console to Ubuntu systems. And did he release an update to his EML dump tool? The problem being solved here with this tool is, well, how files with a Unicode byte order mark, a BOM, are being parsed. So this is fixed in the latest version. And did he explain what exactly happened here? Well, and then we have a couple of patches or vulnerabilities uh, to uh, go over. Let's start with uh, Confluence Data Center and Server. This product received an update that uh, fixed a total of six different vulnerabilities that were rated high. One of them is an improper authorization issue that's actually part of the Spring framework. And then we have uh, three different uh, server-side request forgery vulnerabilities. I would consider them probably to be the more interesting vulnerabilities here. And then two denial of service vulnerabilities. And then there is an interesting blog post by researchers from Mod Zero, Michael Imfeld and Pascal Senker. They looked into Mail Cleaner. Now, the reason it's interesting, I think, is not just because of the vulnerabilities they found Mail Cleaner, but because it really covers a larger issue that I have run into myself a couple times, and that's input validation of email addresses. Turns out email addresses are rather flexible in particular when you're talking about the username part of the email address. For the domain part, well, some interesting things can happen like IP address and such, but for the most part, the domain part is relatively strict. For the username part, sort of almost everything goes. There's a number of interesting characters like quotes, back quotes, uh, curly praises and such that are valid characters in the username part of an email address. But this becomes an problem in my opinion is where a developer is using a function that validates email addresses without considering what is this function actually allowing. A good function that validates email addresses is actually allowing all these special characters. So that easily then leads to bad assumptions on the developer's side. And with that, as the blog post uh, illustrates, to code execution. Real must read in my opinion when it comes uh, to developers and uh, pen testers. Like I said, this is not something that's specific to Mail Cleaner. I've seen this in many other software packages where email addresses were not well understood. And Broadcom published an update for vCenter server. It fixes three different vulnerabilities. Uh, all of these vulnerabilities are rated as critical. The first two vulnerabilities are heap-based buffer overflow vulnerabilities in the DCE RPC protocol. The third vulnerability is a purge escalation vulnerability. No mitigations other than patching are provided uh, by Broadcom. 
And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And our next podcast will be on Monday. Yes, we didn't have one on Wednesday, Thursday due to the June 19th holiday, as well as me traveling. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.